Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons, and uh, here at G1 2022 in Denver, Colorado, I have the pleasure of talking with NGA's Director of uh, the Talent Office, sorry, Ta Talent Development Office at NGA, uh, Kathy Weaver. Uh, Kathy, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get started with some of the questions, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe even how you got involved with uh, the geospatial industry? So I've been with NGA and its predecessors for 34 years, all in St. Louis. Um, my degree is actually in forestry. Oh, wow. And I'll talk about that a bit more as we have the questions, not the forestry degree, but to me the key is to have that strong background in uh, math and science. So with a degree in forestry, I took some geography courses and got exposed to that, and that really piqued my interest to then pursue a career at Defense Mapping Agency at the time. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, that's, uh, that's an amazing legacy uh, that transitioned into NGA as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question here is, and I will look this up a little bit because the question is a little bit long free for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so for those in college and even high school who are interested in uh, working at NGA in g what kind of skill sets or interest are you looking for? So you already heard me talk about the strong math and science background. Absolutely. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? What does that mean? Why? Why? Um, what specific math right, and science? So like, like physics or is it something? So I'll talk about my own um, journey okay. and hopefully that'll help. Uh, so for forestry, I knew ever since sixth grade that's what I wanted to do, was forestry. I've always loved math and science, but then when I got to high school, I took advantage of the diverse science courses uh, my high school had. I took physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, advanced chemistry, biology, advanced biology, um, up through pre-calc in high school. Then in college, um, my degree is from University of Illinois, and if you have a Bachelor of Science from University of Illinois, you're required to go up through calculus. I had the diverse, uh, continuing with the um, sciences, I had to take physics, two more semesters of physics, and chemistry, and biology, and botany, just lots of diverse um, science. But then, also for a BS, you had to have a programming class, computer programming. Oh, wow, even then. Even well, then, yeah, thanks for well, that. Well, I'm sorry, so I'm sorry. The, <laughs> well, yeah, well, so back in the 80s. I didn't, I didn't get offered programming, and this was maybe, well, 20 years ago. I didn't even get offered programming classes when I was going through these. Uh, there, uh, there was still a, a, a fringe option, and you right. had to even know about it. So now, um, these days, for instance, uh, my children, they were offered advanced GIS courses in high school. A senior year in high school, it was the um, professors from the local university who came over to the high school and taught GIS. That got them exposed in high school, and I'm sure there's other high schools that are doing that. And then, when you're in the uh, geography programs or science programs at a university, Python now, I mean, you're learning diverse programming uh, at the universities also, and data analysis. You, know, we, you take statistics as a, um, a lot of the B, uh, Bachelor of Science degrees, but Statistics also. I think the key is you don't have to have the geography degree, but it's the strong math and science background to just get your foot in the door and get started. But it start that exposure but in high school. And, and that's, start to see if that's what you want. And the natural application, you, you mentioned getting involved with the analytics a little bit, and that's natural progression to understand the use cases and how they'll apply all this stuff. Correct, correct. And I think uh, the workforce now, I mean, we're already doing an internal training for our talent development is getting data smart. You have to be, be data savvy. So we'll have the f folks who are doing the deep data analytics, but you need to have some of that basic understanding uh, with data analysis, or even being able to manipulate the data. I mean, even as simple as having the advanced skills in Excel will be able to help you uh, when you have a career at NGA. And it'll also be able to help you once you get your foot in the door to move around within the agency. I mean, I, if we get to later, I can tell you about my background in 34 years, all the places I've been. So <laughs> a little, yeah, excellent. Uh, so the second question here, as we move forward, is there's a great need for more diverse talent in the geo and industry. What are some great models of school districts, colleges, partnerships that are making strides in getting more people interested in geo and in NGA? So some specific programs that NGA is applying. So I'm in St. Louis, 34 years, all in St. Louis. Um, we have partnerships, the educational partnership agreements, specifically with a couple of the local universities there in the St. Louis metro area. Um, Harris Stowe University and helping them with curriculum development in the geospatial field. 
and then also with um, UMSL. And you heard uh, Deputy Director Tanya Wilkerson mention uh, the most diverse university in the University of Missouri system is there in St. Louis. So starting there, having the partnerships with them, letting them understand the, uh, the coursework that we could help develop with them to start getting exposed, especially with a lot of the um, new phenomenologies that are being used now commercially. You know, electrical, optical, EO, and SAR have been around a while, but now we have some more emerging ones that we can start at the university system and start teaching. Uh, but I want to, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I, that partnership, does that mean you, you as NGA go in and, and uh, explain who NGA is and what they're all about to the students with these partnerships as well? So we do have an ambassador program where we go out to universities um, to be at job fairs. Uh, so I've been an ambassador for a few years, quite a few years, and I reflect on going down to the University of Texas, El Paso, and we even visited classes to talk to them about what NGAs, what, uh, what is our mission, uh, what do we do, uh, what are the coursework that they would need to take now in the university system to be able to try and uh, get a position at NGA. And then also being at the job fairs and answering the questions as they're going around and exploring uh, if they're going to be in the workforce in a couple of years, what's the possibilities. Excellent. So, I did want to talk about when you talked about um, the school partnerships too, we need to start at the elementary level also. Let them understand, not specifically NGA, but it, they'll know we are the guests there to talk to them about location on the earth. This is basic geography, right? Right. Basic geography. Be a guest speaker. Um, I did that when my kids were in elementary school. In fact, I have a book that I would read even starting at kindergarten called Me on the Map. Uh, so, and it is a children's book. Yeah, absolutely. And I, th I remember when that came out, it was, it was kind of a game changer for us trying to explain what we do. <laughs> right, right. And then I um, created a workbook to go along with it. So as you're reading the story, if you reflect on the story, when it was me on the map and the little girl is sitting on a bed in her living room, and then you zoom out, scale, zoom out to see the whole floor plan of the house, and then the whole floor plan of the city, not floor plan, but you know, the map of the city. And so I would have the kids start drawing themselves in their room, and then the floor plan of the map to apply the same stuff they were uh, hearing in the book. Are, so you can start at elementary also. Are you seeing this in elementary now? Are you, in, are you start to see more hints of uh, pepper geography classes? In, um, or is that so something my, you really think needs to be worked on in, the, in, in schools today? I think it's there. Okay. And I think if we start our exposure, um, say at middle school, then the middle school um, teachers will be exposing that to the elementary and it can start. I think there's a strong partnership NGA can uh, create with the elementary schools, you've heard the director and the deputy director of NGA talk about the K-12 program, starting with young. And that's still being developed and evolved. But I think that's going to really open up uh, the possibility starting at the elementary school. Get them excited. Get children to be excited about uh, sciences, young, just to pique their interest so that they can get interested in it. And then, like I you know, decided I wanted to be in science starting in sixth grade. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have an interesting story about outreaching at the elementary and middle school level. And for when we have new employees join NGA, they all come to Springfield, Virginia for a week-long new employee orientation seminar. And pre-COVID, I would volunteer twice a year to be the senior in resident with that class. I'd be in the, in the um, program with them, there to answer questions, um, give examples if needed. Well, one of those times I had a young man come up and talk to me and tell me that he remembered when I had come to his class, the sixth or seventh grade in the St. Louis area, Rockwood School District, and I had come to his classroom and talked about NGA and what we did and handed out something. So that was a cool connection to then make how many years later that I had influenced him, or NGA I should say, influenced him to then pursue a career in geography with the ultimate goal of getting employed at NGA and then to meet him when I was the senior in residence that he did meet his goal. That was neat. Excellent. Is that also something that NGA encourages all their employees to do is reach out to uh, the local schools and be a part of the local community? They have a program that uh, if you want to volunteer you can. Okay. And then the volunteer opportunities will come through that central program and then they look for volunteers. I've gone and actually um, done job fairs at the Girl Scout uh, group. They were having a uh, Girl Scouts, uh, Greater St. Louis Girl Scout job fair 
and then they had a bunch of people. Navy was there. We were there from NGA. In fact, it was three of us females who had all been in a system engineering program together. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see here. Oh, we have our third question here. And uh, how does NGA work to compete more effectively with private industry? What can NGA offer that commercial partners cannot for young professionals or someone looking to grow in this field? So, um, one of the things that attracted me, and I still think federal government, you have to, people have to decide themselves, right? So early in their, on in their career, uh, they could start at NGA, maybe then switch to commercial, but then have that avenue to come back to NGA also. To me, the biggest seller at NGA is our benefits. Um, so in talent development, where I um, lead a team, we also, while you're already at NGA, we're looking at your career and how can we help uh, evolve your career and develop you for the future workforce we need also. So we have uh, programs, tuition assistance program, to help continue to pay for coursework or to reskill themselves. We have an NGA college uh, that we teach a lot of uh, geography, GIS, technology based courses at the uh, NGA facility. And then we also have what we have a competitive program, competitive call program where we have employees apply. It's a competitive program, but then you get to go off to school for a year, full time. You're getting paid your uh, um, salary, but your job is to go to school and then focus on uh, a technology or uh, what's the skills that we need in that future workforce. I would even offer as NGA being this central hub of geospatial for, well, in, in, in the country, uh, perhaps even a, uh, a wider exposure to a community that individual companies perhaps couldn't even offer. Mm -hmm. You couldn't even come close. Right. And I've seen, in fact, walking around the conference this week, I've seen people who used to work for me now in industry. Um, so, and that's fine that, you know, we're rotating um, to get that exposure. And then learning what they learn in the commercial industry and bring it back to NGA also. There's also the benefits. Uh, you know, I'm talking about our benefits package. I mean, we can take leave in 15 minute increments. I don't know that you can do that in commercial industry. Um, no, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, definitely over COVID, um, our more flexible telework program to allow for that. We have maxi flex work days. You can work 10 hour days, four days a week and always have a three day weekend. So we have that flexibility also. Um, and then our uh, leave uh, that you accumulate, sick leave and um, annual leave and the carryover opportunity. So I t I've taken advantage of those flexibilities throughout my career, especially when my family was young. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, great opportunities. My final question for you is, uh, what are your biggest opportunities in the next, I'll even say five to 10 years, not just 10 years? My biggest well, NGA's well, NGA's opportunities? Well, NGA's biggest opportunities. <laughs> I'm not going to be there that long. <laughs> ten years. Five, five to ten years for NGA. What are, the, what are the biggest opportunities uh, for people to get involved? When you say people, you're talking people about... People that you're hoping to get involved. So they can um, research NGA on our website. Okay. NGA.mil. Uh, we expose the type of jobs and careers that you can have. Uh, at our website, but also the intelligence careers, www.intelligencecareers.gov. I talk to many prospective employees and point them to that uh, website where you can start learning now. There's a tool online there uh, for you to, a job search tool and what kind of career would be uh, good for you. So they could start doing that research. Uh, talking to high school students, I think is a great opportunity uh, for us to expand that. Um, you know, we have the ambassador program with the universities. We could have uh, guest speakers at high schools, uh, be at the job fairs for high schools too, to start uh, reaching out to them. Be in the schools, let expose NGA at the schools so that they can put a face uh, with NGA and know that it's not just some entity behind a, a, a wired fence. Well, uh, thank you, Kathy Weaver, for joining us and explaining all the great opportunities and uh, what is in store for inspiring a younger generation to get involved with the geospatial uh, community. Um, I'm Adam Simmons of Project Geospatial here at the uh, GeoEnt 2022 Symposium in Colorado, uh, Denver, Colorado. I'll talk to everybody next time.